So quiet. Wow. Okay, so we're going to start on lesson 2.4. We're going to do the notes today, the assignment tomorrow, and then we'll start the, the, the test review on Friday. Okay, so this will be, um, this today is going to go over this. Now, I'll be honest, I think this is probably up there the top five easiest things you're going to do this year. So hopefully everyone's like, yeah, okay, this is really, this isn't that difficult. So this is the last piece of new information that's on the test. So the test will have everything that was on the quiz yesterday and then this, this material here. So let's back up. I want to go back over first something that we did in eighth grade or you should have done in eighth grade. So we're just going to write up here. We're going to talk about substitution. Okay, so what I mean by that is if I have an equation, y equals 4x minus 3, and if I said x equals 2, what is y? Okay, what we should do in that case is we're going to substitute in th the number 2 for x. Okay, so let's think about an athletic team. Okay, so Caitlin's playing volleyball. She's being subbed out. So what happens? Someone else goes in for another player. Right, so Caitlin goes off the court. Someone else comes in the court. So you take, it, you take something out, you put something in. So in this case here, what we're saying is if X is 2, I'm going to substitute 2 in for X. So I remove the X and I insert a 2. So now this becomes 4 multiplied by 2 minus 3. That's what we mean by substitution. So if I say, so x equals 2, it means take x out, insert 2, and then do the math. So 4 times 2, so that means y, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 minus 3 is 5. So when x is 2, y is 5. Okay, now, and later on you'll learn that's a coordinate. That's a, that's a, the point 2, 5. That's how we start graphing stuff. Okay, is everybody Remember that, yeah. or at least if you don't remember it, you, you, do, you know it now. Okay, so that's what we mean by substitution. So let's look at the examples, okay, and then we'll get into function notation in just a second. So look if I look at example one. It gives me my, my equation, 2x plus 1. Okay, if x is negative 3, so once again, I'm going to take negative 3, and I'm going to substitute it out for the x. So this would be 2 multiplied by negative 3 plus 1, which is negative 6 plus 1, which is going to be negative 5. Okay, and you can use your calculator just for this. I mean, you could literally put this part right here, just put that in your calculator. 2 multiplied by negative 3 plus 1, PEMDAS will do it, and you're going to get negative 5. Okay, so we're, you can use your calculator for this, and I will show you also how you can use decimals for this. Okay, look at number 2. Okay, what does y equal if x equals 5? So the exact same thing. I'm going to take 5, and I'm going to substitute it in for x. So y, remember, the, remember that's multiplication. Neg that's negative 3 times x. So that will be negative 3 multiplied by 5 minus 4. Now watch your negatives. So that's going to be negative 15 minus 4. And once again, I could have put that first step right in my calculator. Or if I add negative 15 minus 4, that's going to give me negative 19. Okay, so this is where it's important to be sure you keep track of your signs and using your calculator or Desmos. Okay, the other twist is notice on this one it says, what does x equal if y equals negative 3? So now we're not, so now we're substituting in, but I'm substituting in for the y. So this would come over, I would take out my y, put in negative 3. So negative 3 equals negative 5x plus 2. It's asking for what value of x would give me a value for y of negative 3. So now I have to solve this like, like the equations. I would draw my line. I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. Negative 5x equals negative 5. Divide by negative 5, so x would be 1. And you can always check this. So I can go back up. 
I can go back to my original equation and substitute in one. So y would be negative five plus two, which is negative three, which is exactly what I got. So that's a way for me to double check and make sure that I did the math correctly. Okay, does that make sense to everyone? It's just plain old substitution and doing math. Anybody, any questions, any make, make sense? Okay, so now, now what I'm gonna introduce is what we call function notation. Okay, so this is something new. It's not hard, it's something new, and it's something that's gonna change as we move forward. So you've been doing, you've been dealing with functions, but they all been like y equals this, y equals that. Okay, basically what we're now introducing is function notation. We announced, we pronounced this f of x. Okay, this right here can be any letter. Okay, so it could be g of x, it could be h of x, it could be b of x, it could be z of x. Okay, just the only thing it can't be is x and y. f of x is the most common thing because f for function. That's probably the most common. And I would say f, g, and h are probably the most common letters you'll see. But basically all this means f of x is another way of saying y. So instead of saying y equals um, negative 6x minus 5, we're saying f of x equals negative 6x minus 5. It's just another way of writing it. So this is what we call, this is big boy and girl functions. Okay, so now you're going to, as we get into algebra, geometry, algebra 2, and all that, you're going to be using function notation and using f of x, not y equals. So what this means is, if you see a number inside this parentheses, that's what x equals. So what I mean by that is if I wrote f of 2, what that means is x equals 2. So f of 2, if I took the same notation, would be negative 6 multiplied by 2 minus 5. So f of 2 would be negative 12 minus 5, which is negative 17. Okay, it's the exact same thing we did up there, up above, but we said y equals. Now we're saying f of x, we're, and we're inserting the 2 in there. So whatever, that's the most important part. Whatever is inside this parentheses is what's the value of x that we're going to substitute in and get your value for y. That is the basis for function notation. I mean, it's, all you're doing is just calling it something different. So let's look at example number four. So here's my function notation. Okay, and it's saying find f of 2. And once again, all this means is x equals 2. So we're going to take our 2, same way we did before. So what I ask you is we write f of 2 is 6 multiplied by 2 plus 2, which is 12 plus 2, so f of 2 is 14. So we're still doing the substitution. We're not changing. We're just basically plugging in. It, the, the, the function notation is telling us what value to put in for x. Okay, so why don't you try doing number 5 real quick? Once again, it's g of x, same thing. Remember, I said I can use any letter, so just don't don't try to do anything different. Just as like just as, just the same as if it was f of x. Okay, 
So, Simone, what'd you do? So you took the negative three, so this is x is negative three, so you put this in here. So g of negative three, you said two multiplied by negative three plus one? Yeah. So what'd you get for your answer? Negative six plus Which would be five. Negative, five. negative five. So negative two, ne two times negative three plus one, so g of negative three would be negative five. So that's what your answer would be. Okay, everybody good in that so far? Okay, let's go to the back. Okay, so same thing on these. Okay, notice different letters. H of X, J of X. Do we change how we do this? No, it's the exact same thing. Okay, so go ahead and why don't you guys try to figure out six and seven. Now on seven, for some reason this says F, this should be J, so J of negative nine. I don't know why we forgot to put that in there. Okay. Wait, 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 you said number eight. On number eight, it should be J of X and then J of negative nine. Oh, sorry, on sample seven, I'm sorry. Example seven. I said the wrong number. Okay, I think everybody's got this one. So let's. So h of x is x plus one. Okay, it's telling me that I'm going to use x is negative five, so I'm going to substitute that in. H of negative five is negative five plus one, so h of negative five is negative four. Okay, number not number seven. So I'm going to take negative 9, substitute in. So j of negative 9 is going to be negative 9 plus 1. j of negative 9 is negative 8. Okay. okay. Everybody okay so far? Yes. Okay. So now we're going to do, there's going to be a little bit of twist with 10 and 11. Okay, but number, number 8 and number 9, the examples... We're doing the exact same thing. The math is just a little bit more complex because I've got negatives, x squared, and everything else in. So if I look at number eight, here's my f of x. This is what we call a quadratic, and it's saying f of negative one. So this means you should know this is x is negative one. I didn't write that too, I didn't write that very clearly. So I'm going to take negative 1 and substitute it in here for both x's. So f of negative 1 is going to be 2 multiplied by negative 1 squared plus negative 1 minus 4. So this is where you got to be careful. So that's going to be 2. Negative 1 squared is 1. Remember how I was telling you don't... Don't put a negative 1 squared, squared without parentheses. It's going to give you the wrong numbers. That's 2 times 1, which is going to be 2, minus 1, minus 4, which is going to be negative 3. So f of negative 1 will be negative 3. 
What's wrong, Layla? Until you're looking at it, kind of. No, I just can't read. Oh, you can't see. How's that? Better. Better. Okay. Okay. So, do you guys do number nine? Don't don't go down to number ten yet because it's a little bit different. Try number nine. You're substituting in negative three. Watch the math watch the squares watch the negatives that's the that's the tricky part with this is watching all those things that get stuck on Okay, so what I'm going to do is this is going to be g, g of negative 3. So this is x is negative 3. So this is where you got to be careful. So that's going to be negative 3 multiplied by negative 3 squared minus 6 times negative 3 plus 1. There's a lot of little, a lot of little pieces here to get stuck on. So this would be negative 3 multiplied by 9 plus 18 plus 1. That's negative 27 plus 19. So g of negative 3 would be negative 8. Okay, everybody good so far? Ethan, you good? Okay, so what do you think is different with 10 and 11? What do you see that is different than what we've been doing? So I'm trying to find x. We've been, we've been substituting in x. So now we're saying, what is x? But what's it telling me? h of x is 8. There's h of x. So remember I said we, we're going to be substitute. you got to watch what you're substituting in. So now I'm taking 8 and putting it in right there, and I have to solve for x. It's just like an equation. Okay, so that means this, we would write this as 8 equals 3x minus 1. Draw your line. Plus 1. So 3x equals 9, x is 3. So remember, if it says solve, there's two things you're going to see. You're going to see solve for y, solve for h of x, because they're going to give you a number for x, or you're going to, they're going to give you the h of x value and say solve for, for x. I mean, there's going to be, there's, it's only going to be one of two ways. You've you got to make sure you know exactly what they're asking for. And if you're, if you're not, if you don't trust yourself, okay, the, you, we said 8 equals 3 times x. Well, x is 3. So does 8 equal 9 minus 1? Yes. There's a way to double check. So let's look at 11. J of x is 13. Find x. Take my 13, replace this. So 13 equals negative 2x plus 5. Solve for x. Negative 2x equals 8. Divide by negative 2. x is negative 4. Okay, so 
Worst case is you're solving a simple equation. Best case is you're just using your calculator and you're calculating after you substitute the numbers in. Okay, any, was I lying? Is this easy? Yeah. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you something. Okay, any questions on this? Everybody's good? Okay.